according to you what are some roadblocks faced by ac industry to adopt this kind of solutions i think that on the one side you know there is not a lot of incentives to to do a lot of the potential automation that you could do in the industry because a lot of the industry is built on top of the processes that are already existing so this is very very normal right in any kind of innovation there is a sort of incumbent process process that just wants to remain there right and the other is that we actually lack the the knowledge and expertise even though this is getting much much better and uh, because the ai industry thankfully for us is very open so everything is open source like the latest model by the biggest companies in the world you can find it right now on github you know so the industry is slowly at least since i started for 45 years ago right now like there is many more people working on it but still i think it's too little too few like because you can imagine like this computational design industry that a uh, section of the industry that we think is, is so big i think it's so big because this is my environment is really not even in the biggest more advanced companies in the world it's like a small niche in there right maybe 15 people or 20 so if like a few of them start to apply this automation and ai machine learning techniques is still not enough right so so the problem is this kind of making the first step and this is why I, the only advice i can give to people is like you know just do it you know find something that is like problematic and try to solve it thankfully i see more and more people trying to do that so the knowledge is the other part and i would say that like a few of the other issues like you know misunderstanding of what these techniques and uh, ideas can do like a lot of people are fighting it in sense of like automation like not will take away our jobs because it's like very superficial i think argument but there are much deeper arguments that say you know what about creativity and what happens with you know the actual act of design and engineering you know are we going to lose that and and i think that's a big roadblock a mental road, roadblock and the, and i think is a total kind of like again like false road, roadblock because i think if anything right now today we are losing creativity because we are constrained by our workflows right if i have to if i have like two months of conceptual design process why because our construction process is six years right and my design development is one year and out of that one year i have maybe two months to work on the project in conceptual design because the architect will call you at the, if you are an environmental designer as i used to be the actual you know architect and client will call you at the end so it's it's all made so that this doesn't work efficiently right so so if, if you have that it's why is it why is the time for design what is the time for performance design where is the time for you know generative design and look into your design space and find some design intelligence and articulate to the client there's no time for all this stuff so if anything this is gone right now and where i am right now around me there's maybe 50 construction sites right the south southeast asia is built as we speak and if i take a picture it's very difficult to to separate them one from the other they're all the same right why are they all the same because a lot of this process is based on cost and based on time pressure and based on limitations of technology people just copy paste what they do you know this worked before let's do it again so i think this creativity and design is already kind of lost and in fact ai and machine learning can help us bring it back by taking you know this stuff away and letting us not not just by letting us sketch because i don't know if people will go back to sketching like if they don't never sketch in their lives they won't do it probably but by giving you a technological way, a technological means of exploring design. Like, I'm not an architect, right? So I would, it doesn't mean that I have a machine learning model predicting, so I would start sketching, right? I don't have maybe the, the skills for that, but it does mean that I can go through thousands of designs and maybe extract some knowledge out of and intelligence. So that will help other designers in the group. So that's, I think, the big roadblock there is, is this thing of like creativity and are we losing it? And, you know, this debate. Of course, it could happen that, you know, AI and automation is used to enable these processes. And this is the big, the big fear that I have is that we have all these amazing tools and we use them to do what we used before faster. So that's why I said that infrared, uh, in a sense, doesn't want to do that. Even though we can right now do 10,000 times faster than 
an urban simulation, let's say an urban performance assessment, we don't want to give that to the world because that's not our goal. We don't want to give access to people that can just do fast simulations and do the rest as they did. The point is to change what you were doing, right? So yeah, I think that's the biggest. And then some of the other roadblocks, I think, okay, obviously the, the software and hardware infrastructure is kind of like, they're not open source at all. Like they, they, the last biggest roadblock that I can think of is how closed and walled off the industry is. Right, like I had this post on LinkedIn a while back, like the typical AI community. I see. What are some ways like we can change that scenario? I mean, the easiest way is imitation, right? You can just say, okay, what are the others doing? So like software companies, you know, they understand the open source value, like software, the software, I don't know if it's an industry, but let's say the software community, right? Software engineering is a very good community to get inspired from. And actually you, you do see this, like a lot of the very new kind of like, uh, very promising startups in the AC are software startups in, in a way. I am kind of like hesitant on that, not about their value, their value is complete, but you know, I don't necessarily mean by all of this that we all need to become developers and software engineers. I mean that, you know, engineers and designers and people who sketch, they are still valuable. It's just that they need to find ways to kind of open source their knowledge, right? And create a community where we can draw from that. So one way is imitation, right? That's probably the easiest way. But it's extremely hard because a lot of the structure, again, I'm not the best one to speak about the business structure of large AC companies, but I can imagine, and, I, and I've talked with people, that a lot of this structure is based on this you know, control of information, you know. You see, like, you can see almost every other month, I don't know, say every week, maybe a few months, these new tools getting developed by, you know, big big companies with money to invest in this, right? And then the line under this tool would say, this is our, our uh, proprietary tool set. And the minute I see that, I know that this is utterly useless for the world. Like, it will be very useful for them, and even for them, not so much, and I can explain why. But for the world of the AC and perhaps the world at large, it would be useless because there is only one company, even if it's very big, using it, right? And it will never be developed properly because you can't draw the expertise and the, the creativity of the crowd of the AC. Other people cannot build on top of that, right? They cannot fix what you didn't do. They cannot think, you know, the room is always smarter than you, right? So the room of the AC community is always smarter than any company, even the biggest. And so, so it's very, it's very hard because that's how we are built to work. So I would start by imitating. And then the other thing that you can do is at some point, and a lot of very smart people and, you know, much smarter than me have realized this, I think, is that there is no reason to really change, you know, how companies are doing things. Like there's no reason to go to the big companies and try to change what they're doing. You can make your own company and disrupt them. Right, so this I think will happen, and it starts to happen. Obviously, you know that that disruption, because of how imbalanced our industry has been, especially in money, money-wise, it can be like stemmed a bit by big companies buying smaller companies, and that will happen. But eventually, and especially now that they're becoming software companies and their margin of of profits are much higher, I think eventually a lot of these aspects that bigger companies are either resisting or withholding, the, some other, other more innovative, smaller startups will disrupt this completely, right? They become big actors. So I think this is what I see happening. So one is imitation. So everyone can imitate, even larger companies can start kind of working like Google, you know, or like um, Uber, or not, not, you know, engineering companies like um, OpenAI, or to even better, like, you know, hugging things, or like, uh, you know, these open source companies that are built completely on open source. They have no proprietary thing, right? And they are billion dollar valuation companies, completely built on open source. And what are some emerging trends in the field of computational design? So I think like, obviously like, okay, machine learning is one, right? People are trying to, to apply it. And as I said, you know, most of the applications are either to predict, so to make things faster, right? Or to optimize, which I, I find kind of curious. So like, especially a lot of reinforcement learning applications I see, it's kind of like, 
VPNs and there's another black box optimizing. But you know, it's a start. It's a start. So that's the probably the biggest trend right now. Interestingly enough, and probably you know, this is it's quite expected. We are behind in this. I think the AI as we as it is now, and this is also my own intuition of the AI domain, and because I try to follow it closely, it's shifting away from that. So it's shifting away. Deep learning is there, will be there forever, right? It has a lot of value for a lot of people and what you can do with it, predict and even generate in some way something useful. It will be useful for businesses, right? And a lot of products out there in the world. But when it comes to intelligence, and if you want to design intelligence, AI is, is moving away from that. So it's moving towards, it's kind of moving backwards towards evolutionary design and how you can do, especially the focus on novelty and what is new, and what is creativity, how you can have creativity and diversity. And, and so I think in the AC, it would be very nice to look back a bit because we were, we used to do that a lot, right? Even from the 90s, like evolutionary computational stuff. So it would be nice to revisit that. But currently, I think the biggest trend is machine learning and its applications. The other biggest trend that I see is a sort of platform approach. So people, uh, again, the startups that I'm saying that might disrupt uh, other companies, they are realizing that the people need spaces where they can experiment and generate designs easier, you know, like more streamlined. So they are building this kind of technological platforms, connecting everything. So I think this is a big trend in computational design. And, you know, another thing might be, you know, you know, how do you kind of like escape from BIM? Well, then like, I understand the value of BIM and it will be a big part of the industry, but there are a lot of people trying already to think, not to escape, but is there something after, or maybe like a more complete, in, you know, information platform around our design and how can it be also more open source? So there are a lot of people I see, I see a current way for open source and a few other, you know, like, you know, Blender BIM, for example, and a few other like software tools coming out, you know, that. So that, that is hopefully a trend to stay here. And yeah, I think, I think, I think those, those might be the biggest trends. And then unfortunately, I think the trend that is missing, and this might be me not being very informed on it, is the sort of like basic science. And so like, I can say an example of energy simulation, right? It was the first simulation I did, right? I haven't done an energy simulation in a couple of years. The reason is, one reason is I'm not doing compliance certification projects anymore. The other reason is it's not really useful, right? If you find one building where your model is actually the same as reality, and then, you know, I'll give you some money, you know, like something like that. And the problem is not like, oh, the designer wasn't aware of it, uh, or his, he or she wasn't good enough, or, you know, we didn't have time or to be too detailed. The problem is the fundamental kind of like abstractions in a lot of our simulation tools, they are not very good. So I'm hoping that there will be research on that also. So like, for example, that's why I, I went and I, I, I stuck to more complex, let's say, quote unquote metrics and studies like fluid dynamics because they are much more developed, right? They can, they can come closer to reality. Of course, there is always a scene to reality gap, right? But you are much closer to something that is actionable in the world, right? So I would like to see a bit more improvement of that. And a few studies and simulations and computational design studies to become like more useful, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of yeah. And like building upon that question, according to you, what kind of design applications uh, which uses data and intelligence would be common five years from now? But are not used widely today. Okay, so there's a few like dimensions to look this from. Like the first dimension is the obvious, like what is the easiest to use them on, right? So everything that, that is amenable to data analysis and data analytics, I think from five years from now, the first thing you would do is a sort of like you know data analytical step. So that relates a lot to like big, like you know building information modeling. Uh, why? Because most of it is a collection of data in a way, right? The, the sort of like 3D geometry is just a... I mean, I, I probably this is controversial, but this is a beautification on top of data. You know, it's not the important part in a way. Uh, it's much better to see a modern line, much nicer, you know, it's 
but the value of the information model is information. So people already are kind of developing a lot of tools to, to extract knowledge out of this data or not really knowledge, information. The first step is that. Because that's interesting. Like, I don't think we have building information model anyways. This is another big discussion. Maybe we have like building data models, you know, maybe BDM is a better aspect for just a simple bin, you know, a file that I used to do the same thing I used to do. So this is just data. Information is like actually extracting some information out of this data. So I think that would be, and it's already, you know, kind of everywhere, you know, this data analytics part. And it's not very machine learning in the sense, running a model and optimizing, and you know, like uh, predicting and stuff, but it's a very big part. And actually, even in the work that I do, 95% of the part is preparing your data and understanding it and all that stuff. Maybe 99.5%. You know? so, so that's the first one. So the easiest you can start with. And then the other part, uh, I think the other easiest part might be uh, things that are closer to business. Business intelligence, you know, like people are going to start to do that analytics on, you know, uh, efficiency and productivity and what what things that work in our projects and a lot of knowledge retrieval so a very big application that i haven't seen still in ac is like natural language processing there are some startups that do it in compliance or regulation but there are very few companies that do it internally so i think that's a very easy application so where you have like a whole dump of thousands of documents from your projects you try to extract knowledge from there, and this is a quite old uh, domain, like 30, 40 years already this is happening. So that's that's another easy one, I think. And especially the closer you get to construction implementation, that gets very important and quite quite good to do because there's a lot of inefficiencies there. And the other thing I think that is the easiest, not easy to do, but easiest in terms of like people 